Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone as we are streaming live here at ITW 2024. This is JSA TV and JSA Podcast, your newsroom for all things digital infrastructure. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO and founder of JSA. And joining me is my good friend. We go way back. We're just like doing the logos and like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but joining me here today, Chris Rabbi of Avacity Infrastructure Group, a trusted provider of communications infrastructure solutions and services. Chris, welcome, welcome. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, good morning. And thank you so much for spending a little time here kicking off uh, ITW Day 2. I know your time is extremely valuable, my friend. So thank you so much for sharing a little time with Happy us this morning. It. All right, so let's jump in. Of course, uh, Chris, the president and CEO recently. Yeah. So congratulations is in order. Yeah, thank you very much. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be joining Vivacity at a time like this. I mean, you know, I've, I've been doing, as we were reminiscing, telecom and fiber related telecom for a long time now. It's a little shocking to say 25 plus years, but yeah. unfortunately true. Um, but, you know, this role is a little bit different for me than some of the ones I've had in the past. I mean, I've had, I would call leadership roles at fiber focused telcos, but they're more of the, the, the type that do, you know, you build, you operate, you sell end user services to your customers. It's kind of standard fiber based telco. Right. The vastity is a little bit different in the sense that we do the build, operate, maintain, but we usually do it on behalf of other customers. Um, so for me, it's, it leverages all the great things that I've learned in my many years in, in telecom. But um, the nice thing is, is it's a little bit different because the, the way we deal with our customers is different and the dynamic that um, you know we have with those our, our clients is different. And honestly, in this time when you know there's huge tailwinds, both public and private investment in the space, it's, a, it's an amazing time to join a company like Vivacity. Yeah, one that is so customer focused. Yeah. You can literally customize. Right? Yeah, and that's one of our big strengths. So. I mean, that's amazing. So. And that kind of, that brings us right to some headlines I'm seeing. EX squared uh, technology, um, making headlines with two notable projects all happening um, in Arizona. Yeah, no, yeah. That, that's right. And uh, we've been getting a lot of, I would say, good press around our wins in Arizona and deservedly so. Um, the first project that you know I can talk about is, is Navajo County. Um, we're building uh, an extensive middle mile infrastructure for Navajo, and, and for those not familiar with the state, it's in it's you know not in Phoenix where you know there's a lot of kind of population it's density. Right. It's a very uh, rural area, and because of that, they have unique challenges bringing broadband to their constituents. So um, we won we won this project actually last year, and we actually put shovels in the ground this year. It wow. gives you a sense for how complicated and long this permitting process is. But it's a project that we are we feel really good about, not because it's good for our business, but because we're really going to help bring broadband and, and modern day uh, connectivity to the people in that region, which they're really doing without today. Yeah. Um, you know, that's one. You know, it's kind of got some headlines. And the second one is our our partnership that was recently announced with Arizona State DOT. Um, which is a 25-year partnership where we are going to be maintaining, operating, and commercializing their fiber infrastructure um, across the state and state highways and, and interstates that they, they own and operate uh, fiber on, um, which is great for us because it's foundational and it really allows us to kind of put deep roots down in Arizona. And, you know, as you guys know, Arizona is a hotbed of, of digital infrastructure activity from data centers to private fiber investment to you name it. So... For us, it's 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 a key component of our growth strategy, and we're happy to be there. Um, you know, we've got other good momentum in the state, as you would expect. You get a couple of big deals like that, and people take notice. Um, nothing we can really announce today, but you know, stay tuned. We'll be happy to share that news when when the time is right. Um, and and look, you know, Arizona's been the focus as, as as you said recently, but we do projects like this, whether it be middle mile or you know, municipal uh, government stuff, prior to the home, you name it, across many states. I think we've, we've done projects in 37 of the states. Wow. Um, we've got people in 22 different states. So we're, we're kind of big and growing. I think um, it's an, an exciting time. Um, you know, one of the things I did, I did want to at least touch on, you know, because people think about the Vacity Infrastructure Group as a monolithic entity, but we really are three sub separate sub operating units. So EX squared, which is our group that's done some of these fiber projects is one piece of it. We also have a wireless focused infrastructure uh, group called Terra Consulting. 
Um, and, you know, they deserve a little bit of airplay themselves because they're a very similar. We, we do uh, infrastructure services for major providers, right? We're a certified uh, services provider for all the major uh, mobile network operators, all the big tower companies. So we, we view there to be some synergy there between, you know, our fiber activities and then the wireless stuff because it all goes together. And I think, you know, we're believers that, um, you know, we'd love to bring fiber to every household and business in the United States, but it, especially when you get into some of these rural areas where we do a lot of business, wireless is going to be a piece of that last mile strategy. So it's nice to have that all under one roof. And, and candidly, it's one of the reasons I, I was attracted to this job, because it's an interesting piece that I've never had in my kind of tool bag before as, oh. a, as a CEO. Well, I love that. I love that. The focus on connecting the underserved all the way up to connecting government entities that so require yeah. cutting edge, next gen. Yeah fiber and yeah. connectivity, fiber structure. All right, so let's talk bead funding. Yeah. How does that shape what you do, network infrastructure initiatives, the scope, the timelines? Yeah, well, you know, bead's an interesting program and, you know, I'm certainly not the world's foremost expert on bead, but, you know, as you would expect, given our partnerships and, and the great work we do with government entities, bead is a big part of the future for us. Um, what, if you've spent any time thinking and learning about bead the one thing that jumps out at you is the complexity of the program yeah i mean it's i i i you know on our behalf of our customers who we help through this process i don't envy the complexity they have to deal with so every state has its own unique set of challenges as you might imagine you know, we were talking about arizona their problems they need to solve with their bead money different than for example new york or maryland or under these more populous states um so that's just one piece of it i think you know the other factor that has kind of jumped out as a consistent challenge we've heard is the interplay between bead funding and other federal government subsidy money, right? So, you know, there's been a lot of talk about RDOF and RDOF has had its set of challenges, again, well publicized up until now. But one of the things that people are trying to think ahead to how they're going to administer bead funding is they can't have any overlap between uh, a project that's been funded with one government program. And if, you know, for example, some RDOF commitments fell through, they still can't apply bead funding to that. I think they're trying to navigate this complicated situation, um, given that we've got a long track record with many of these government entities, whether it's through their Department of Transportation or their state or county government. We take this partnership approach and we're willing to kind of help them piece it together, make use of the best funding, that make the best use of the funding they do have. And, you know, it, it's just going to take time. And I think, you know, we if we keep track of which states are at which stages of the process, I think earliest we'll probably see money is first half of next year, 2025, and it'll go a long tail after that. So we're not predicating the success of growth of, of the Vacity and, and our, our operating entities on bead funding alone. But once it does start flowing, we think we'll be a, a big participant in some of that success. So well said. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Nice job, Chris. Yep. And thank you for being so generous with your insight and time yep. here on day two of ITW. Yep. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, no, happy to do it. And thank you for having me. Uh, we are honored. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Happy networking.